Good to see you, man. You too, Jimmy. Yeah. Good to oh, see yeah, everybody. Yeah, you too, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you too, Jimmy. Thanks for joining us on the Metal Voice, Jimmy. <laughs> Oh, All right, man. two 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 of the great guys right here live streaming right now. Hold on, I'm getting some audio problems. Hold on, fixing. Okay. Good. Done. All right, streaming on the Metal Voice today. Oh yeah, two of my favorite guys here. Got of course this is like Canada, Greece, and the USA. So we got Gus in Greece, of course, his new album Quantum Leap. We're going to be talking about that today. Thanks, Gus, for joining. And of course, my pal Todd Latori, all the way in Florida. Look at that beautiful yes. Florida weather. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, Look man. Looks nice. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we come over, Todd? Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, it's nice that uh, we're doing this today. It's uh, The album was released October 8th, right? And this is one of your first instrumental albums. It's called Quantum Leap on AFM Records. My first and I guess, instrumental yeah, your first, not your first solo album, but your first no. instrumental album. Yeah, so, yeah correct. Yeah. I mean, and you know what? Everybody feel free to throw out questions. Todd, feel free to throw out stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a few. Right let's there. mix it up. <laughs> All right, so let's just start off. Why an instrumental album right off the bat? Get things going. First of all, I, I just said that before we went live, but it's really good to see you guys, both of you. Um, thanks for having me over. Thanks, Todd, for for waking up early to join us. Uh, I, I go, I go. Is Todd gonna wake up on time? <laughs> but he was pretty good. He was good. He was good. Yes. It was, and it, it was, it was the Greek who was late. That was the Greek who was late. <laughs> yeah, it was me. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I mean, I, you know, me and Todd, you know, we, we toured a couple of years. That was the last tour, at least that we did. I know you guys have been playing some gigs lately. Uh, but this was the last thing that Firewind did before pandemic, the tour opening for Queensryche. So that was like the last thing, you know, the last Big people thing. I saw on, on the road was, you know, yeah. Todd and, and Queensryche and, and, and us. And so, yeah, it's good to connect again. Big time. And yeah, man. So anyways, yeah. Well, what was it about the album, right? I mean, I... You know, after that tour, I, I guess we, we put out a new Firewind record and then lockdown, pandemic, as you know. So I had nothing else to do. So I was like, well, we're going to be up here for, for a while. I mean, I, I could feel, I could sense that it, we were going to be locked up here for, for a little bit, at least a year. So I started putting down ideas and pretty quickly I was like, well, this is the time to really do an instrumental project, a guitar project, like a, because I've done instrumental songs before, but not like as a full album type of thing. I never had the time to really dive into it properly. So now I had all the time of the world to think about it, to, to do all my demos, to, because it's different, man. Like when you're writing with a, with a singer, like when you have, you kind of like bounce off each other and you feel that everybody, you know, puts their thing there. But when, when it's just you and you're doing, you, you, you're doing just instrumental and then the, the guitar has to take up that space that the vocals occupy normally. So you have but to think a little that. bit differently. It but does, it does yeah. that. The songs, as I'm listening to them, have great, what I hear, vocal melodies. So yeah. you've got your main melodies, then you get into your solos, which are still melodic, and you leave space to have the vocal, the, like a melodic lead, that's that hook, right? Yeah. And then you do it into your solos, and then it goes back into what would be like a vocal part, but it's on guitar and it sounds, you did a, a awesome job. I'm like, wow, I, I, yeah. I wish I would have wrote that vocal melody or that melody because they're great. Thanks. I mean, I, I guess that's, I'm kind of used to that as well because I've, I've been of working course. with singers yeah. all my life. And so I think like that, it has to have a, like a, a musical meaning. It's not, I, I, the last thing I wanted to do was to put out a record that is like a, an endless Shredding. guitar solo. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like we've had too many of those around. They're, they're boring to me and I'm a guitar player. And, uh, and I mean, I, I went back and listened. In my opinion, like the king of that melodic rock instrumental guitar is, Killer. The, the king of that is Joe Satriani. So I went back and listened to a lot of that and get inspired and I also thought like, well, yeah, we need melodies. We need the hooks. You know, what, what would a singer do here? You know, so 
I let but the guitar like, be the know, voice. But, but like when you have a song where if you muted the vocal, like almost a, a, a vocal guide with, but with, with the phrasings and not just a very linear thing, but you're, you know, all of the, the bendings, yeah. all of the things that the characteristics that go into like how a vocal would move you're yeah. doing on guitar. So it, again, it takes away from the, you know, the whole time yeah. that nobody gives a shit about you were able to blend, which I think is what any seasoned mature guitar player ultimately would aspire to be able to do because it's it's not that easy to do you know you have to be you have to think as a songwriter not necessarily as a guitar player you're writing songs you're right and then and actually I have, I have to say this is what i actually learned from this album doing this like i had to like like you said l learn how to do these little things here and there and develop the melody not just like play the notes right like how do you do those little things and build it up yeah. Like you say, like a, like a singer would do. Like you never sing the same uh, uh, um, verse line twice. You will do some alterations on the second time around. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I got to say, guys, like when I heard, okay, Gus is doing an instrumental album, I go, oh, God, I got to sit through an instrumental album. Like, <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being honest. No, I go, I got to sit I, through I an feel, instrumental I feel the album. Same thing. <laughs> Right, right. No, no, but but then when I put it on and I actually listened to it, it's to both of your points that it was pretty enjoyable, you know, and because because to what Todd's saying, to what you're saying, the guitar is sort of replacing the vocals, so it kind of feels like it's a song in itself, right? It's not that it's not like I'm listening to Mozart's, you know, Seventh Symphony or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it, it was enjoyable. I got to say, the production is stellar too, man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, Dennis Ward right there, you know, doing the uh, mixing and mastering, and he played bass too. Um, Todd, I don't, I'm not sure if you know. I don't think you, you definitely haven't met him. I don't know who if you know who Dennis Ward is. Uh, I don't. I'm sorry. He's a he's a he's American actually, but he lives in Germany for I think 25, 30 years okay. at least. And um, yeah, he he. Um, he was the bass player of a band called Pink Cream 69. I remember them. Yeah, from the 90s. And um, in another band with Michael Kiske called Unisonic. Okay. And um, and he's, you know, he's like an all-around guy. He's he's multi-talented like you. He can sing great. He's a great bass player. He's a great songwriter. And he also mixes and stuff. So so we work together a lot. He, he helps me co-produce Fire so, Rain. And so, so did you go, did, at any time, did you leave, probably didn't leave Greece. It was all... Okay, no. so so so, uh, did you do drum programming to lay the bed, the framework down, and then did you send tracks to Will? Because I see that Will is credited. Uh, no, is Will, Will, Will played it on, on the previous album. There was another guy who. Oh, played I thought it. that he played. Okay, so what what was this one? Uh, a guy called Vincent Velasco. He's a, a British guy. Okay. Um, it's kind of a funny story. So, it, it, what exactly what you just said? What happened was. I knew I couldn't leave the country. I couldn't yeah. go in a studio and work with somebody. So I program everything. I always do that anyways. You know, I use, I have my home studio set up. So I, I program everything. I always do like nice sounding demos, you know, with drum programming. I play the bass mm -hmm. and guitars and everything. So, so I did everything. I, I thought, well, this time, this is going to be like a hundred percent me, like no outside collaborators right. since I'm stuck here. Let's just do this, you know? And, um, so this, this, this drummer that I didn't know of, he, he contacts me at some point and he says, dude, I saw something on social media that you're doing an instrumental record. If you need a drummer and he sends me some links and he's incredible. Wow. He plays with a prog band called Pendragon. Okay. England, so. And, um, and originally I thought I was blown, I was blown away and I was like, well, thanks man. But you know, since we cannot, uh, go to a studio, I, I don't think I can. I'm probably going to do this with a drum machine. Uh, my original idea was to use a, the drum to program, program everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then I thought about it. I'm like, well, that was pretty stupid. Like, you have a great drummer who's offering his services, and you're like, nah. <laughs> That's right. the, so, so I went back to him, and I'm like, hey, um, you know, I shouldn't have said that. So can you maybe? Um... <laughs> so I'm like, maybe we can. Uh... He's, I said, do you have? How how can we record this? Because how are we going to do this? And he's like, well, I have my own studio set up so he could record, engineer Perfect. everything and just hand us the tracks. Perfect. And 
yeah, I mean, it was pretty obvious that this was a guy for the gig, you know. And, uh, and, right. and pa pa pause, pause right there. Pause right there, guys. Pause right there. I'm going to throw out a question here for both of you. Okay. Gus, Spanakopita or Tirapita? <laughs> Same oh. with Todd. This, this is Michael. <laughs> this is Michael. He's saying his wife, his Greek wife, asks, what is your preference, please? Me? Yes, you. Um, Just pick one or the other. You know, Spanakopita or Tirapita? Which you know, there's a... The, there's a, they, they make them together as well, half and half. Oh, they do halvers. <laughs> Todd, yeah. what about you? I don't, I don't know what the second Spinach one is. Spinach pie or a cheese pie? So little, those little I, cheese I would, puffs I would, there. I would, I would, I would pick a cheese pie because I don't like spinach. Your wife never makes that. No, because I don't eat spinach. Really? Yeah. This is a good way yeah. to eat spinach. Yeah, you gotta eat your spinach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, you know, I always kind of i mean my favorite are like the 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 lemon potatoes in the oven you know sure kutopolos de forno <laughs> my potatoes oh yeah <laughs> what about you guys spinach or cheese or i guess you like both i i like both you know i'm i'm, I'm i have different preferences preferences every depending on the day i mean usually we'll go for cheese but every now and then i like spinach pie and then my grandma used to make half and half and i love that because i was like ah you know, well, my mom makes it from scratch, like scratch, literally from scratch. She, she knows she, how to make the, the filo as well. Yes, from scratch, like everything. And just like friggin' her hands are like, she's like 80 yeah. something years old. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the apparently, I don't know how to cook, but that, apparently that's where the secret of the great cheese pie or, or, uh, or spinach pie is the, 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 the filo, you know, how they yeah. open that and how they make yeah. it. And yeah, they have their yeah my wife knows how to make that stuff. We, we just got another, I swear it was like, 30 kilos of feta and uh okay and now I, I have to say this story now <laughs> okay, hold on hold on i got a plane flying overhead sorry yeah hey be quiet guys we're hanging out i know come on i got i got gus g what's the matter with you <laughs> gus g airplane passing over <laughs> with, with you know this new album quantum leap yeah. Um, okay go well, ahead. just so, just so everybody knows spanakopita is spinach pie they're little puffs with phyllo and their spinach and cheese inside and the other one's cheese pie so for those of you who don't know who are not greek that's what they are that's what we're talking about so jimmy check this just out just giving some context go when we were on the tour with queen drive two years ago and then i think it was the first day or second day of the tour something like that it was in athens no. i think i know what you're gonna say no 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 no. wait no oh. we, we didn't we didn't do greece with you we did the no, when the tour first started, you came on our, on our bus and you're like, hey, guys, check this out. And he oh, yeah. shows up with olives. Oh, like, dude. I brought this. I brought this. This is from Greece. I'm like, OK, we're like. <laughs> and then he brings like this big, like, chunk of feta cheese, like, puts it on the I table. Gave you, I gave you a like a brick of the, yeah. of the feta. It's like uh, the Thoni, I think, or Vivoni, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, and then my in-laws have tons of property in in uh, Sparta, and they have olive trees. They have tons of property oh, with olive wow. trees. That's pretty cool. Before this is done, after your thing, I'll show you, Jimmy. There, I swear to God, these green olives. We have black, green, and then we got another tub of these olives. But yeah, I would say, Gus, come on our come on our bus. He's like, eh, you know, dude, I feel bad. I don't want to take your stuff. I'm like, fuck no. If anyone would appreciate this, it's you. And so we had feta for almost the whole tour. Oh yeah. And I remember like my tech, Jimmy, and I remember him going, Well that's strange. I would have never thought that a guy from America would just walk in and give us like the best olives from Greece. Yeah. <laughs> best feta cheese ever. Like that's yeah. weird. Why why is it like that? So we were just like shaking our hands. But it was delicious, man. Thanks. Yeah, and then right. Gus, he 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 was on our bus for you know a few days or whatever. We're like, dude, come 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 hang with us, sleep on our bus. And we had available bunks and everything. And yeah. so, you know, it'd be late at night and I'd I'd break it out and I go, Gus, come on, man, let's let's eat some feta and all of those. Okay, <laughs> you know. So like, yeah. like, like in North America, you know, uh, Greek food is sort of prominent on the East Coast more so and the West Coast more so than the middle of the U.S. or mm -hmm. North America. 
because it tends to be more of a population there, you know, on the sides, mm -hmm. uh, less in the middle of the U.S. Not to say that it doesn't exist, but I'm just saying that you go to New York, mm -hmm. Toronto, Montreal, the huge Greek populations. and Maybe because you know, when, when Greeks first, like the, the immigrants of the 50s or 60s, first landed there, so they yeah. stayed there and they... Yeah. Oh, the yeah. problem and is Florida you're not too. getting real, you're not getting like, it'll say feta. It's a type of, it's a white cheese. It's like not, it's rarely real feta. It's just, yeah. they call it feta. And, uh, and then, you know, of course in America, they put potato salad in it and there's lettuce and that's, they don't do that. As we all know, they don't do that there. So, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a little onion maybe, but cucumber, tomato, olives, feta, olive oil, salt, pepper, that's it. That's the, that's the way it should be. But, yeah. um, um, Getting hungry yeah, I mean, now. yeah, I mean, there's nothing like it's just like in Italy. And if you go there and have real Italian food, it's the noodles that it's not the sure. same as anywhere else. Same with Greece, yeah. with Greece. Anyway, yeah, gr you, hey, Italy's Gus, I got a too. question. So yeah. obviously you could have played bass on your record. And was it because this uh, engineer or actually you you kind of engineered it with him? But the guy that mixed and mastered since he plays bass, were you just like, you know what? Yeah. I think I think a bass player is going to do some things that a bass yes. only a bass player would do, not a guitar player. Because there are guitar players that can play bass very convincingly where you don't go, oh, that sounds like a guitar player playing bass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was that kind of your it was, approach? It was exactly that, actually, yeah. Because I, I think, you know, Dennis, he's just a great bass player and he has great tone. And I said... Yeah, just do your version of it. Yeah, I think in the end, he, uh, I think he kept a, a, a my bass tracks on a couple of the songs because he thought that he couldn't do anything much Better, more yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he said, yeah, this is great as it is. So I think he kept it on a couple of tracks, but the rest, he did it. Yeah. Right, and and you produce you self produced it. Yeah, because you know, I mean, you know what you want. I, 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 yeah, when I, whenever I go into a project, I, I pretty much know already by that time because I do pre-production demo, so I know how it's going. I want it to sound like. I know what I right. want. It's not like I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna go into a production experimenting as much. Um, there will be little. Well, and that's the beauty of. I mean, even though Firewind is your band, I'm sure that there's still a democratic process, if you will, where somebody might say, "Hey, I think this uh, this arrangement." maybe uh we cut this first chorus in half because it happens three times or whatever the beauty of having it as your own baby is you're in the driver's seat and yep. you've 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 been to the mountaintop i mean you've you've recorded and done the things with ozzy you've done had a successful band of firewind you've you collaborated with some of the greatest people out there and you're one of them so you know from an arrangement perspective what and of course everything's subjective but you know what you want to hear and when th something becomes redundant that you would shave it down or omit it or whatever yeah. so that's you know always what? very gratifying though as a solo because that's what i got to do with mine was with your solo hey, somebody might say i don't like that but i don't give a fuck that it's my yeah. record you you're know? right yeah i had that feeling when on the on the first record like usually like you said it's a it's it's the band is still you know I it's my band but everybody shares their opinion and they say hey maybe sure. not this like this and then we'll discuss it and blah 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 and sometimes this is not such a good thing but <laughs> that's a different story <laughs> but but you know when I finished my first solo record that was like I don't know that I did six years ago or seven years ago I remember I was in the studio with the engineer and whenever we were done he just looks at me and goes so that's it we're done and I said I look around I'm like well there's nobody else to ask here. So I guess yeah. we're done. So, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a little bit strange at first, but it's a, it's a different uh, liberating kind of feeling in, in a different way that, Oh, okay. You know, you, you'll take the blame for everything. If it's, if it's shit, it's shit. But you know, if it's in the end, if you made that decision, it's, it's up on you, you know? So um, right. it's, it's uh, yeah. All right. And Gus, but also Gus. Let me just ask this, Todd. Gus, for someone who's never heard it, discuss the different genres of, I guess it would be metal in mm. each song. Like, I mean, you know, you're, you're the different, there's different genres. There's the blue, there's power, you know, power metal. I mean, maybe you want to just talk to that a little bit, you know? Sorry, you Todd. Mean, you mean on the record? Yeah. Yeah, I on mean, the record. I, yeah. 
the thing is, it's like also with the, another thing that you get, you can get to do while doing an instrumental record. At least I felt that uh, it's because I didn't have to worry as much about okay, if I'm collaborating with different singers, you have, you you're thinking of okay, what is this guy going to sound like over this song, or if I'm doing this with somebody else, blah blah blah. But at least you know when when you're doing like the instrumental thing, you can branch out a little bit. So I have like a song that's synth wave, so it's just like. 80s kind of synthy kind of things and uh there's like a bluesier track on there there's a couple of metal songs that's obviously. night driver right night, Dri night driver yeah 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 and so, you have, you have it, so many you have so many i don't i guess i'll just say tricks you have so much in your arsenal that if a song starts to go a direction it's not like oh this guy just shreds neoclassical stuff it's like no 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 there's 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 blues yeah. riffs in here. There's like yeah. finger tapping. There's sweet picking. There's, you know, all of the different kind oh, yeah, of yeah. Yeah. things but, but that you're able to thing. pull in and make it more colorful, you know? But I, I, you know, it was interesting also to try and write in that style as well, to, to write something bluesier that's, hey, I, I can turn down the gain on this song. There's a song called Enigma right. of Life. So turn down the gain and I played, you know, more Gary Moore rather than yeah, more bluesy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. yeah. And it's kind of it's kind of cool, you know. You know it's, a solo record can allow you to, to do that. I mean, I'm not saying I can do all styles because I can't. You know, I cannot play jazz and I cannot play a lot of other things. But it's cool to try and 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 branch out a little bit and try it out at least and bring in some influences out from other styles that because we all have we all love other stuff outside metal, you know. So we sure we are our our backgrounds and our influences and. Uh, and the things that inspire us. I got a you know, question that. for you. Do, so did you mic your cabinets? You you play Black Star? I do, but you know, on this record, I, I did everything without Correct. amps. Yeah. Did you use plugins or did you use a Kemper or what'd you do? Plugins on the whole record. I, really? Dennis, yeah. Dennis wow. reamped all the rhythms later. He reamped yeah. through, through an EVH 5150, I think. But all the lead tones and the cleans and all those things, they're plugins, man. It's, it's so you insane. have all so you have all the dry, you have all the dry leads, which actually, you know, when you play those dry things back, you can hear every little finger rub, every little mistake, <laughs> yeah. every little thing, right? That normally distortion and reverb and delays can kind of smooth out, right? Yeah. So probably maybe because of that, I mean, you're such a clean picker and everything is so clean one of the cleanest <laughs> guitar players i've ever heard um and the, and That's i would sick. imagine i'm i'm wondering if when you went through and listened again you listened dry and went okay i i'm gonna i'm gonna redo this part because i'm hearing a little something even though once it runs through the plug-in it goes away I don't know. Do you think that you microscoped? Uh, you're playing a little bit more because because it wasn't you were you know obviously when you're tracking. Well, let me ask you this: when you're tracking yeah. to make it more fun, you're having it go through the plugin to have that lead sound because it makes it more fun, right? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. But when you go back and maybe you you listen to something and you bypass the plugin and you hear just the clean playing, were there times where you might have redone a part that? because you had the in yeah. the, the di track yeah. I know that you, mean, you yeah. wouldn't have done on a say a previous recording yeah i did that actually yeah and i i i always do that especially with the rhythm tracks because okay i don't mind if it's a little bit dirty on the lead sometimes because that's more rock and roll right right uh so but, but when you do when you track rhythms and you know when you're doing two or three or sometimes quadruple rhythm tracks two left two right that's when you. I go back and listen to the DIs. Like I, I do, like a proof listening with distortion and then with uh, just a DI, which sounds yeah. sounds kind of funny. But you know, you have to go back and listen. You have to, to that mic. One. Yeah, yeah. Well, plus, like you say, when you have four rhythms, you know, what I'm I'm not a good guitar player, but one of the things that I'm trying to figure out how to do better is when I'm playing rhythm a rhythm thing. How do I get rid of the the little yeah fingers, the, the little finger uh, the the sliding noise the sliding the yeah 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 and that, i don't know that. if that's a if you're using a gate to eliminate that or that's just in the player's hands 
it's in the it's in for me it's in like if i i've learned at least from back in the day when i was tracking i remember i frederick nordstrom in sweden he taught me that he's like dude you gotta make sure you gotta the transitions are clean yeah like if you hear too much this squeaking noise just go back and redo it so i learned like that way of that's what i need to practice then because there's times where it's like it's a quick movement and yeah. it's like well how how am i making that slide without sliding on the strings maybe you have to program yourself to pick your fingers up off the string instead of gliding it you know anyway yeah, i was yeah, curious you, about that no no you have to think about that you're right about that you know it's because if it's too much on on a couple of tracks then it, it can sound it's like really loud yeah, you know how it is. Like you, you listen to the final mix, and then you're like, "Oh shit, I can that noise, that can thing that. really sticks out." And yeah, usually, these, these are things that only we can hear. But yeah, how, these how do you art, guys... there's these artifacts that poke through, and you can't edit those out. You no, you can't. You can't trim that stuff out. I mean, you no, no, have it's to recorded, just play it's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah, guys uh, some good guitar talk there? Uh, you know, uh, I have trouble just playing the C chord, so it's all right. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting a, we're getting a little bit geeky here with the things. That's okay. So well, it's interesting are... that you went to, that you went through plugins because when I hear it, I didn't I didn't feel I didn't wasn't hearing that sound. The rhythms are they're reamped. Reamped EVHs, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the leads are not, and I I mean nowadays that's the thing. It's as much and you know me because I I play with two hundred watt amps on stage and I yeah. I'm, I'm oh, yeah. using like tubes uh, i'm like very old school with that yeah yeah and, and uh but the, i have to say also like for for home studio use uh, these things man the, a lot of these companies uh, the the plugins they have come a long way and they yeah. sound so good like it's yeah. almost like you, you're you still miss that warmth that a tube has i can i can tell that difference but like in terms of playability and the way it feels it's almost like playing through a real thing man nowadays yeah on mine we we ran through my camper and we used the EVH and the Boogie, the Mesa Boogie, I think it was the Mark IV uh, mm -hmm. for the rhythms and the leads were EVH, uh, but all, all through the Kemper. Actually, I think the, lead, the leads were a mic'd cabinet, I think, uh, but the rhythms and everything were done through the Kemper and it fucking crushes, dude. You can't, yeah, I mean, it's just killer. Anyway, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. no, it's all good. You know what? It's good to change it up and give people a little more perspective on, you know, on uh, how it's done. That's cool. Yeah. Um, lost my train of thought. Yeah. No, we're I mean, talking about is, that. Go ahead. Because now I was just going to say that today there's like really no right or wrong way. There's just so mm -hmm. many. We have so much technology in our hands <laughs> and so many useful tools. Um, so you, you can basically do. I feel, For example, I'm, I, I used to go in the studio and all these things and 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 expensive studios and all that and the clock is ticking and now I'm, I, I just can't go back there you know even if I it's too comfortable like you can comfortable. stop stop and start with the space bar on your own yeah you know um so I saw that you did a signing for this I think Hakos was was that a signing for this record in Greece in Greece he's doing a little bit for, of a signing for, tour yeah was that a, a, was that for this it was yeah for this album I, I went out on the, the 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 week that it came out I, I went out on a little tour here in greece and uh i did um some in stores you know uh I, I gotta tell you this todd you know you don't realize how popular gus g is this guy is like i remember i was in <laughs> california and the guy walks he walks into the hotel and he's like awesome. swarmed by people saying sign this sign this sign this where me this was at the metal hall of fame yeah uh, it was oh at the hotel. yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. being swarmed by people. I'm like, what's going on here? It's like, <laughs> no, you confuse me with Steve Vai. Was no, Steve no, Vai. no, no, no. Steve Vai is another <laughs> story. But you too, man. You just, people just like, it's anyways. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's, it's I, I think, I think you're, you, you know, you as a player and you're, you're sort of what you've done. People really recognize. I, you know, I, I just think you're a stellar guitar player and. And you've created this sort of niche for yourself that that so many people really admire. It's it's it's. Um, I'm trying to find the right words, but yeah. you really stand out in the metal community as some sort of renowned guitarist. You know, I'm just shocked that you haven't been picked up by a major band. You know, maybe that's not what you want to do. I don't know. Like I, like. I mean, I've, I have. I mean, of I've, course, there's Ozzy, but I mean, you know, 
you have Andy Sneap, right? And Judas Priest. And that's going to, yeah. and uh, why pick him when you have like this great guitar player, <laughs> Gus G? I mean, like, I don't know. It's like that, that just, just, that makes sense. But you to know me. what it is? You know what it is? Sometimes, like, uh, the bands, they, they, um, the way they think in, in, when you're in a band, you're like, okay, who is in our uh, immediate circle of people that we trust? It's, it's not just who's a great player out there and who's necessarily like a great guy and a great, and a great player and looks good. I mean, those things are like things that everybody thinks about when you're going to present a band, but also when somebody legendary from a big band, like you just mentioned Judas Priest, you know, somebody like legendary, uh, um, like Tipton, you know, like he has to step out for, you know, health reasons, you know, like, they have to probably, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, I'm, who's in our immediate circle that we trust, yeah, we know we can course, bring on board. Everybody's going to be comfortable. You know, right. the guy who's kind of like stepping out has to be comfortable as well. So, so it's like all those things. Um, mm -hmm. that, and I understand, you know, and, and I mean, also not, look also now with, with, uh, with Queen track with you guys, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's nice to see within uh, the family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, M Mike stone is back and touring with the guys and helping him out, you know, when, when Parker had to, to, uh, to go off and do his thing and and so and, and I, I i get those things you know sometimes it's like you have to see who are we comfortable with who can sometimes sometimes it's also a question who can step into this like right now right. and do it as well right yeah i mean that was certainly a delicate balance because you you're like okay parker's been in the band for a long time everybody loves him he's a sweet guy he played the parts great yada yada and you know he his guitar shop is doing great and he yeah. couldn't he couldn't tour anymore so it's like okay well mike has helped us when we did uh some shows with the scorpions mm -hmm. and when parker couldn't and then he already knows the stuff and then there's this oh they're down to you know I mean, it was still with two original members anyway so what does it matter but but then you have this, this, the optics of what that means. And there was a fami familiarity with Mike Stone. People were like, Stoney, oh shit, you know, great to see. And so it's, 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 it's comfortable and all of those things. So yeah, aside of, I mean, uh, there's amazing guitar players that contacted, you know, and said, oh, you know, hey, if there's, a, if there's an opportunity and you're, you're, you're flattered by that, um, inquiry but at the same time you're like this band they're you're not going to hear sweeping arpeggios you're not going to hear the what these guys are known for this is not that band uh -huh. you're you're not going to be shredding like you would in some other so if you're like a guitar player guitar player that's used to doing all this stuff queens solos are not like that they're just uh -huh. a totally different thing and, and there's and, also and todd there's also the factor that some bands not all bands they just want that hired hand to do what they want do these yeah, tricks play and it that's like it. the record play it like right? the record now and they don't they don't want recording. somebody who's creative like gus to sort of go in there and sort of and to your point to change the sound or to to branch out into other areas they just stick not, to the plan not in a band not in a band that already has such a yes. legacy and a, and a sound already not i don't think anybody would risk that i mean journey didn't risk that uh you know judas priest is not gonna yeah. risk that queen's rack is not gonna i mean these are like bands that have their own thing yeah. their own yeah. sound it's like yeah. a certain blueprint you're not gonna you're not gonna mess around with that man well, right. like petition. I, I, Carlos is starting a petition. We demand Constantinos in Judas Priest. We have to sign this petition. <laughs> Costa, we got to put you in Judas Priest. Hey, where do I where do I find the comments here on YouTube? Is it on yeah. YouTube? Yeah, it's there's a chat going there. Uh, why don't I see it? Send me the link. Everybody, we're going to go on our phones while we're live. That's what I'm trying to do. Is I'm trying to find the link. Well, that's why I'm reading the comments. But you know what it is? When, when I'm kind of involved this way, I kind of forget what's going on this way. Here, I'll send oh, it to I you. Oh, I see it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I got it. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So oh. so the artwork. I love the artwork. Yeah. It, cool it's, artwork. It's, Let me it's, just put it up know, here. Yeah. Show everybody the artwork. Let me show everybody the artwork. And who who did who did I'll, that? Did I'll you do you. it? Uh, no, I didn't. I have um... boom quantum leap. Like who took the photo? Like how to tell us about the artwork and the cover? Yeah, I have um, the photo is uh, actually um, this friend of mine here in Thessaloniki. He's a great, great photographer. His name is uh, Akis Dusladzis. 
Greek names. So, I, <laughs> and you know, we did a great photo shoot, and you know, these uh, these photos came out amazing. And I was like, dude, I want to use that for the cover. We were originally going to use it for, uh, and I think we used it for a um, campaign with with Jackson for, for my guitars. And I'm like, dude, this is a great photo. I sent it to my graphic artist, uh, a guy from Brazil. His name is Gustavo. He's also another Gus. Gustavo Sazes and I've I've been working with Gustavo for like ooh, 14 years he has done wow. he does our websites he designs our backdrops our merch he does oh, wow. all, the, all the cover like he's my main go-to he's guy he's your guy the last 15 years since the album that we did the the premonition with Firewind yeah so so he's the guy uh, and he's done all my solo stuff he's created the symbols like the logos he's that's great so he's the guy I, I work closely with. So um, I send David, photos da him. David Reese and Max Norman say they really loved Wicked, Sen Wicked Sensation. Just a heads up. They sent me a message. David Reese, singer, and Max Norman, producer, just uh, said they loved Wicked Sensation. That, that's Lynch, Lynch Mob, you mean? No, Wicked, Wicked Sensation. Sensation. Did you play on Wicked Sensation? Oh, that's a band. Yeah, you're right. I did a guest solo. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too many was... projects going no, on. No, Max I Norman, was... you know who Max Norman is, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Max he's saying hi, and he's saying he really liked your, I guess, your solo on Wicked Sensation. Oh wow, thank you, honored. Yeah, yeah. Max Norman, he's the he's the man. He's the didn't, man. didn't Max Norman do Wicked Sensation, the album by Lynch Mob? I don't know. I don't know. He's done so many albums. I mean, Max, I know if you're he... listening, didn't you? I know you did. <laughs> I could send him a message. <laughs> we can get him online if you want. I mean, geez. <laughs> so, Gus, will you do? Um, what What's the situation like where you're at with COVID? Can you do clinics? Can you do what's What's going on? Um, yeah, in, in Greece at least, right? It's uh, it keeps changing every couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, right now there's a. I mean, there's talk about another lockdown because cases are rising, man. Really. Uh, yeah so uh i think you can still do indoor events and things like that i think it's only for vaccinated people by now uh and uh 50 at 50 percent capacity maybe okay so i just did like a clinic in athens um okay. for like a limited amount of people yeah. like in a, in a music school so you know we're just kind of like talking if we should try and do some shows but the thing is like every two weeks everything keeps changing so it's really right. hard you can't to yeah. plan. plan anything ahead you don't know it's not like so, the u.s it's not the u.s is sort of still going strong like even in yeah. canada the wild it's the west, same thing dude. it's the wild west man <laughs> yeah. it's like texas florida they're just like friggin' who cares but you know it's strange enough the cases are going down in florida here they're going up and we're we're on with vaccination passports and such right i don't know i don't know i don't know it's going and up we couldn't even too. like even if i wanted to tour america i think they just open the borders now like all this time Euro europeans couldn't fly over there so and that and who knows that could change again could change again yeah because we're supposed to come over for this uh i mean you guys are going to be there the monsters of rock cruise i think you guys are playing there yeah Todd? we're scheduled we'll schedule we are scheduled for it yeah yeah same for us so if it all goes well i'll, I'll be seeing you there <laughs> but uh yeah yeah i'm curious um but because I, I i don't i don't know if Americans can go to Europe right now. Yeah, Europe they might. Oh, they can. Okay. Yeah. It's and there seems to be some sort of vaccination issues in the Euro European Union. Like they're accepting certain ones and other ones they're not. You know, like I, really? I, I would, I would think Last, AstraZeneca is being problematic. I, but the yeah. thing is, Europe is going in, under another lockdown right now. I heard like Austria is in lockdown and yeah. Germany discussing about, about Germany. To. It's about to. And if that happens in Germany, I think the rest will follow. So we have to probably. Really see. Yeah, I just talked to my friend Sasha the other day from Germany, and uh, he's near uh, Nuremberg, and he was telling me, he's like, yeah, they don't call it a lockdown, they call it a restricted, whatever they call it, but he says, yeah, they're getting ready to do that again, and I was like, God, really? Because for so long, it was like, I mean, aside from some serious hotspots like Italy and maybe one or two other countries, like Greece was doing really well. Greece was really low for like a while. And yeah, now, but... I don't know. And everybody was kind of closed. 
their own country borders were closed from other surrounding countries. You couldn't get in, you couldn't go out. Um, but now it seems to me like many parts of Europe are, are not doing well with the numbers. No, they're not. It's going up everywhere. And I mean, Fuck. basically what they're, they're, they're pushing for the vaccination rates to go up, you know, so I think yeah. you can travel, but I think it's, they're just making it way more difficult for the unvaccinated ones. So um, I think that's the main change that we're yeah. seeing right now. And, well, uh, just so you guys know that here in Montreal, Quebec, the vaccination rate is 90%. Really? For people who are eligible, it's, di it's different, right? eligible people it's 90 percent. we have a vaccination passport on our phones only mm. vaccinated people are allowed to go eat out or watch shows or go to events so if you don't have your two shots you're not allowed on your phone or you know your card and yeah. the numbers are still going up so they're still yeah. going up huh? and they're still so they were down for a while it's i think it, it it does help it pushes it down it does push it down but at the same time, the numbers are still going up because now winter's coming. People are yeah. going indoors. People are congregating inside. Yeah, families right. are meeting. So, and now you got this other variant coming out. So, I'm just trying to say, Florida. Meanwhile, the numbers are going down because I think people are more outside now. They're less air conditioned. Perhaps. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what the what's going on there. I would think the air conditioning plays a role in the summer. You know, uh, that circulation of the air. Now that Absolutely. you guys have nice weather, you don't need People it as much. About, yeah. Yeah. So it sort of like brings it down. Then again, I'm not a scientist. So, All so right. Gus, uh, for what's going on, obviously because of the COVID situation still, it's hard to plan or book anything. The, the, the can keeps getting kicked down the road, as we all know. Yeah. yeah. Um, what uh, What's going on with Firewind? And um, we actually maybe, fun yeah i mean we just did our first show like in two years we just came back from a one-off in switzerland like an oh. indoor event yeah that was the first show the tour first, date the, the, yeah yeah the one <laughs> the one should have just had that on the back of the shirt yeah. <laughs> one day. didn't this final tab do that like they were like world tour just one day like <laughs> they said instead of doing a world tour we invite the world to come see us so. there you go that's great <laughs> so we just did that one and uh I mean, we're supposed to start next year. We're you know, yeah. coming over for this cruise. And then we're doing like a 20th anniversary tour in Europe starting March. Oh, wow. And May. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, everything is going to be. Are you doing right. like a festival circuit run? Or are you doing yours plus uh, those plus like your own, like a normal tour where you're doing clubs in between festivals or whatever? No, we're doing like a club tour Okay. in, in May. I think we're, we're doing Spain in March and then the rest of Europe in May. And then like a few festivals, like fly in and out thing, like one yeah. of things for, for a week. And we have like four or five scheduled for that so far. And I mean, we, we're we getting asked I mean, the, to, to do a lot of things now, but we have to see what happens as well. Um, you know, every, right. every, time, every time Todd smokes on the show, people give him shit. <laughs> They give Why? you shit, don't they? They give All you the shit. Time. All the time. They go, How dare you? You're a singer. What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't care. Whatever. Singers smoke and singers drink. You know, they, it's not like. I bet, you Gus, I bet you Gus knows a lot of really good singers that smoke. And some people hide it and some people don't. For yeah. years, I never wanted anyone to see me smoking because I knew, you know, if you have a bad show, Never mind that there it is, there 25, it is. That's miles that month. You know, like, oh, that's why he's going to ruin his way. And then you sing Killer, and you could say, yeah, I don't smoke anymore. Like, that's why you sounded so good. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's an expert. I don't care. Everyone's an expert. All right, let's let's have a little fun here. All right, I told, I sent you an email, Gus, and I go, top five Aussie albums. All right? Oh, yeah. Right at the top of your head. We're just, we're not going to go with the typical Aussie questions. We're going to go with your favorite five, top five Aussie albums, Count them backwards if you could sort of pick them off in your head. If you could think about them really I, I quickly. Thought, Me and Todd will weigh in. Yeah, I thought about it uh, um, for a couple of minutes, actually. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you get asked this all the time. I mean, it's not something new. No, what I do get asked about all the time is which one, which guitar player I prefer. But we won't go there because it's been done. 
because that's also kind of silly, I think, because it I, is. I, I grew up listening to all these guys, man. I love Jake. I love Zach. I love Randy. It's like, it's part of and my Brad vocabulary. Gillis, Brad Gillis stepped in. Yeah, it's great. Brad, you know, yeah. So I, but you know, right, the guys- Count backwards. This, your, fa your fifth favorite Ozzy album. And you can't oh, include you, yours. Oh, you want it? You want it? Yes, I want yours. Person. One, two, three, four, five. Five to, four, to uh, one. You mean starting with the least favorite? Starting with no, the least five. I mean, we're only picking five. You have your favorite. No, the, the second, okay. third, fourth, fifth. But we'll start with five for your least favorite, like to your point. Oh, Not to make things complicated. It is coming. You just did that. So you just made it complicated. Can it, can it be like in no particular order? Like it can't be that? that way. Okay, no particular order. Okay, whatever. Okay, go ahead. You're, you're the guest. The guest. You have to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, you're the tiebreaker here. Would you prefer no particular order or an order I think, countdown. I think, I think to relieve the burden of uh, for Gus <laughs> to have to choose a favorite, I would say pick your top five in any order. Doesn't matter. Okay, all right. Yeah. So you guys outvote me on my show. Okay, it's all right. Yeah. It's okay. On, let me just let me just <laughs> just go go any any so order. Right. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry about it. I'm kidding. All right, pick one. Five. Okay. And why? Uh, just quickly, why? You know, we don't have to go into the whole you know the history of the album. Yeah. I was five. okay. Five. Uh, Bark at the Moon. Okay. Just, just because of that title track. So good. It's like just it has to be like my top favorite, like my my favorite Aussie song. At least when I when we played live because we opened the shows with that, and I just love that. Would it's that be album. your favorite Aussie album? No. You no. see what I'm doing there? You see what I'm doing? There? I, I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm trying. Is that I'm, your favorite though? It's not. Where would no. you put it? In, in, if, if you had the whole Aussie catalog, where would it okay. go? Sort of. Here we go. Just think about it. Like, I would say it's my third favorite Ozzy album. I would say, personally, that would be my... How about, about you, Todd? Would, would, if, you were to, if you had the whole spectrum of Ozzy albums, where would you put it? Like, in the higher, the, the mid? I don't, I, don't, I don't have the spectrum of Ozzy albums, so if I have to go off the top of my head, yeah, I don't have Ozzy albums. Sorry. Um, but you've heard Bark at the Moon, I'm assuming. Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blizzard of Oz. Yeah, I mean, dude, Bark at the Moon is is one of my shot that's the song shot in the dark is one of my all when it ever it comes on mm, that's another album mm, i hear mm, mm, mm. that's ultimate sin okay well what a see yeah i should okay. just i should just park the moon to well, i'm gonna yeah, read the tracks the moon is, yeah i'll while you guys are doing that i'll i'll pick them out you'll pick them out you'll pick them out okay guys okay. go go all right park at the moon four. number by four, the um, by the way todd and i we we do this ranking albums all the time so oh you do okay yeah. yes yes yeah. so it's it's all i good. always get stressed out when somebody tells me give me your top five but in particular it's okay order, come on. stress yeah. is good stress makes good no. art go ahead no it gives you a gray hair here on the side yeah i know i know <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah anyways number four um no more tears okay and why is that because it's an amazing album <laughs> all right is it is it is it zach wilde's tone is it the you know just the the, the i songs? think it was just i think it's just everything fell into place on that album you know i think no worse for the wicked is a great album mm -hmm. the one prior you know the one before no more tears but i don't know the stars align on that album i mean it was it was just ozzy's ozzy's biggest album after the randy era i guess ever mm -hmm. you know i mean he got a Grammy for that. You know, the, the title track is just an amazing song. Tell, tell me about the song, No More uh, uh, No More Tears, the song itself, with the rhythm, the rhythm, sort yeah. of like the intro. Is it true that Zach Wilde did like so many uh, sort of rhythm tracks? He multi-layered the rhythm tracks on that. Oh, you I didn't know, know about that. I, I never no? heard about that. What, what's 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 the what's the story about that? that he I guess you know how you double your vocals? He quadrupled and... I vippled and you just oh, yeah. multi-layered the, the rhythm, right? I think I think a lot of people did that, and maybe it sounds like it's quadruple. Like there was a lot. Like I mean, yeah, there was a yeah, lot. Yeah. There was a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I've done that on certain albums as well. Um, I think we okay. did that on Scream as well. All right. So uh, so we have Bark at the Moon. We have No More Tears. Todd, which was which what was your favorite? Okay, you like Ultimate Sin. Yeah. Todd, this is this is a mess here. This is just getting messy. I think number three for me. Yes. Ultimate Sin. Okay, Ultimate Sin. That's the shot in the dark, Todd. That's what the Ultimate the Sin. Okay. Yeah, shot in the it. dark. Yeah, that's it's okay. Don't favorite. worry. I'm, 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 I'm okay. It's all I good. I love that. I love that song, and I also love. There's a lot of hidden 
gems on that album. Mm -hmm. um, Thank God for the bomb. L Lightning strikes again. Lightning um, strikes again. Killer of giants. Yeah. Um, I remember learning that my guitar teacher showed me that when I was a kid, and that was like learning a lot of chords stuff. And I remember telling Ozzy about this record, and he was telling me that how much he hated that album. And I said, "Why, man?" I said, "That album has so many great songs." And he's like, "Ah, it was just a bad period in my life, and the the, the mixing is not doesn't sound good." And I said, "Well, you can always remix that and reissue it." And he's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> good idea." He hasn't done that yet, but hopefully someday. But if it happens, we know that you were the the catalyst there. Okay. No, no, I don't think so. I wouldn't. I would never take credit for that. But I remember telling him that like. 10 years ago and was like dude mm -hmm. that album is just why don't did you, you ever like sleep at his home like hang out like just in his guest room hang out and sleep there no i didn't but i i, I recorded the album in his home studio so i yeah. i used to go in his house like every day for like six weeks and we were tracking guitars with kevin Churko and did yeah. they have like butlers and stuff like <laughs> i don't know like what's it like at ozzy's house i've been outside yeah. of ozzy's house by the way in beverly hills I yeah. filmed myself out but there. They, but they, 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 uh, they've changed several houses, I think, since then. Yeah. Uh, the Osborne's, they, they, that's the one I saw. Yeah, yeah. They, I think, yeah, they sold that house. And they sold the house that I was there at, the, at that time. I think they live somewhere else now. But um, I don't know where they live. But but were there, like, butlers? And, I mean, they have, they have assistants, there... you know? They have their assistants, and they have, um, yeah. uh, like, a, somebody. Hey, hey Jimmy. Yes. I'm going to, real quick, I don't think Gus will mind me saying this, but... <laughs> We used to, I would pick his brain. So, dude, that's so fucking cool. Tell me some cool stories. And, you know, when you travel everywhere, everybody thinks, oh, you've been here. Like, I remember, uh, mm -hmm. like, we played in, in Dublin once. And I'm like, uh, I woke up in a parking lot on a tour bus. An hour later, a little minivan picked me and Scott up. We drove 10 minutes through the city and some alleys. And I showed up at the back door. I walked in. We were there all day and night. We played the gig. It was nighttime. We drove back to the parking lot, got on the bus and left. I didn't see jack shit of Ireland. I don't know anything about it. When hmm. I would talk to Gus, was interesting. You know, they're flying private, private jet. You know, they're not flying commercial. Mm -hmm. We fly commercial. Uh, but, you know, it would literally be, thank you, good night, band bow towel around the neck or a robe or whatever <laughs> go, go goes to the dressing room maybe a quick change Str yeah straight in the van Sh straight in the van to the fucking tarmac and on a jet wow and they would have a hub of say a home uh, in this part of the country or a place here in europe and so that would be home base but literally yeah if you wanted to hang out with gus after an aussie show he was already 30,000 feet in the air by the yeah. time you could even get past security. And I yeah. found that interesting that there wasn't a lot of, there was no hanging out no. with, you never know. Cause I mean, the biggest of the big are going to show up to Aussie gigs. Right. And maybe Gus hasn't met these people and Gus yeah. gets to meet people. And as soon as the show's done, he's literally in a, in a private car going to the, to the plane. I and, never got to meet um, anybody actually because, you know, for example, I remember like the guys from Steel Panther were opening up for uh, a couple of shows in Germany, and I, I, I met them like I toured with them, like a few years later, and we're just talking about it and we're like, I, I, I wish I, I would have met you guys back then. I, I never got to see you. I never got to see you play and like until later in the day, you know, years that's later. That's interesting, Jimmy. I think a lot of people might think. Yeah, it is very these, actually, these, and that's a very crazy... pampered kind of perspective, right? Right, Gus. Yep, you get you pampered. You get the, you know. I think it had to but... do with Ozzy just wanted to get in as quickly and get out as quickly as yeah, possible. Yeah, he just wanted course. to do the gig, and and you know he was when I was in the band, he was 61, 62, or I don't know however old he was, and he just didn't, you know, he wanted to go back into his to his hotel room, been there and done that, shower and just relax, man. He just didn't want to hang out and. But it's lonely, you know, like, yeah, it, it can be very lonely. Like everyone's like, oh, you're on top of the world. Yeah, but you're you're not you're, you're not isolated at the same you're time. Not, yeah, you're you're yeah, alone. Yeah. You know, you have handlers and assistants and people runners and people getting you whatever you need. But 
Yeah, it's but a different the, tour. But at the same time, Todd, though. you're saying I'm on friggin' Ozzy's tour, man. You know, like you're, you're, you're there's the other side too, like you know, the yeah, arenas and. You and, have a lot of time to, 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 you know, a lot of quiet time in between the gigs, you know, in a hotel room by yourself to think about a lot of things and, mm-hmm. and yeah, and really. And, and great hotel rooms, right? You're getting yeah, private yeah, yeah. jets. Oh, I'm you, sure. you really feel like now you've become a star, right? Like you've really you feel know, like you made it. No, I, di- I didn't feel like that. You know, I. Well, I, you're, I, you're a humble guy, though. That's a difference. You're brought up I well. Always thought, but yeah, let, let me see. Calope di. Calope di, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that a lot. But... <laughs> I also hear Calope Rique que Malacas. Oh, Malacas too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear that a lot, (laughs) those two things. But the thing is, you you have to understand that all these these things have nothing to do with you. Like you have to, I don't know who thinks that this is when they reach that level. Unless you are the boss, it's like your band and it's like, you know, your business that makes this money, you know, sells that many tickets, blah, blah, blah. Unless it's you, they come to see. Right. Uh, and if you, then then it's a different thing. But if you're working for these people, like you know, I always said, like I'm not a rock star. I work for a rock star. You know, I play for a rock star. You know, so I, I knew, you know, I knew where I came from, and I knew how I was going to be getting out of that. The thing is, the big question is, what do you do with this opportunity that you've been given yes. afterwards? Yeah. That's what yeah. you got to think. Yeah. You, 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 you can't think about all the private jet and, and the hotels and nice hotels. all these things fucking cost man i mean that that's all i can tell you so and that, that's 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 a fraction of a percent of artists that can actually travel that way but you know i gotta say both of you guys you know as and i know todd Moore, right and mm-hmm. i gotta say you, you because you built your success over the years and you had to sort of work for it and i could say the same thing for you guys that when you've reached that level, you're more grounded and you're not, you know, you appreciate things a lot more. Would you say that's a fair assessment? Yes. I, I, yeah. Well, I guess it depends what kind of person you are. Because overnight I, success, you sort of like lose it a little bit and it gets to your head. But when you like, look, I don't, know anybody, who, I don't know anybody who has had that overnight success. I mean, look, like in, in Todd's opinion and in, in Todd's uh, case, sorry. Uh, I mean, he was already in the scene for so many years. He had done so many things, you know. So, I mean, I did things on a local level. I mean, I started playing in clubs when I was 14 and I was did, grinding You did Crimson out. Glory though as well? I did that for a few years. But it's not the level of Queensryche. That, it's that's not the, the level. It's I mean, it never, never would have opened. The, the Queensryche obviously afforded me opportunities that Crimson Glory just wouldn't have. It was more cult followed. It was more of an underground thing with a devout following, et cetera. But... I mean, I know local guys and bands that think they're relevant. They think they're known. Like, I hate the word rock star. I just despise the word. But yeah. they, they, they think that. And, and uh, I'm like, dude, I've, I've probably forgotten bigger things than, than you'll probably ever do. And that's not a, an arrogant position, but it's like, I know where I came from. I didn't get this recognition or any kind of notoriety till I was in my late mid to late thirties. Makes I'm a difference. Almost, Makes I'm almost difference. 48. And you know what, if it ended today, I am so thankful and I would, I would never be like, you know, uh, out there just playing all Queensryche songs. Like I play that in Queensryche and that's where it starts and stops. Uh, if so, if I was doing it, the band retired and I had my own thing and somebody wanted to hear Queen of the Reich, okay, I might throw that in for a nostalgic, fun purpose. Mm-hmm. But but it's like what Gus said. He's been able to, very in a very smart way, capitalize on the opportunity. Now, not saying he couldn't have gotten there without the Aussie gig, but let's just be very honest. That was a springboard that that guaranteed him to be a, a worldwide known name as a guitar player and he was able to get all these endorsement deals and and when he was out of ozzy he didn't just uh let those go like oh it's over he's like no i have a name for myself i have i'm gonna keep playing music till the day i die no matter who knows me or likes me or doesn't or yeah. whatever but he's nurtured those relationships it's you're contact, right man. you're right it's, con- it's contacting those people when you don't need them to just say hello 
And then yeah. when something does come up, they're going to say, we want Gus on the cover of this magazine, or we're going to do a nice layout in this magazine. We're going to have you on, on all these different, you know, he still has, all, he's been able, because I promise you when he was doing any press for Ozzy and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. They scheduled it. He was, he, they gave him a list and they contacted and it was done. They weren't Gus's contacts. Okay. Gus has had to make his own contacts through Firewind, through Gus G, a separate from Ozzy, yeah. but yeah. it's but it's allowed him to have a career, a a, a, a better career, yeah, uh, with more with more uh, viewership otherwise, and yeah. he'd be a fool to not know that, and he does know that, and he takes care of it, and that's why he's very well, well very well said, Todd. <laughs> but it's true. It's no <laughs> very very well me. said. No, I it's I no agree. different I than say. me. If I w if if the band ended today. Dude, I can forever say I have sang for I've sung for Queensryche for almost a decade, and we're putting out the fourth record. If it ended today, I have contacts. I have, and I can yeah. forge my own path. Yeah. And uh, you're just you're just grateful and thankful. But I think there is a a humble there's a humbleness that comes with that when you're less impressed, you're you're more focused more on the music than the image. There's yeah. a lot of people that just want to look and have this perception and, and the music is secondary, right? Because it's a business at the end of the day, but, but you when you can blend those two and have a nice balance of being the artist that you are first and also being able to earn a living from it. To mm -hmm. me, that's the greatest success anyone in music can ever have, whether they've been in a six, a famous band or not, yeah. you know, people say, Oh, you've made it. I don't even know what that means anymore. <laughs> yeah, in the in the eighties, you made it basically in a year or two. You're suddenly playing arenas and you're selling a million copies, and then it yeah. got to your head and everything went to shit. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's exactly what how Todd described it. I mean, I probably couldn't have used the English English language as good to to put these things together because exa it's exactly what he says, what he describes. That's exactly the feeling. Um, I mean, all in all, it's like you're giving this, how I look at it, it's like you have this big platform, you know, you know, you have this, like you said, Queensryche, it's a big brand, you know, like that's the, your platform and you, you, you're, you know, you go in there, you do your job very well. And, and like you said, if, if that thing so at some point ends, you know, it's part of your legacy of your history. And now yeah. you've given, the, you've been given this platform and you, you branch out and you continue working if you choose to. Because it's also what it's also a personal choice. You you might choose right. to do something else. I mean, look at um, like in Ozzy's case, uh, uh, guitar players like Joe Holmes. He, you know, after Ozzy, he didn't, you know, he just didn't uh, follow his music career. He maybe did other things. Or Jakey Lee retired for a number of years. And, and yeah. there's also Jimmy. There's also a humility that I think. We're getting really deep here. We're getting you know, really deep in the psyche here. I think uh, I think that I think there's a humility that has to exist or should exist. For example, Gus is playing when he was playing with Ozzy. The people are there primarily to hear those hits that everybody knows and loves and are dear to their heart. Now they're going to sprinkle in some new stuff. Don't get me wrong, but you know, he understands that. He, he is not the songwriter that is part of that original legacy that the people are there for. He understands well, Same with that. you, right? I mean, well, that, 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 when that, I that. look, when I'm singing Queen of the Reich and I, I say this goes, this goes back to the roots of Queen's Reich, by make no mistake, I am never ever claiming that I was at, at all involved or at any part of a process that has to do with the great glory, you know, that legacy that Queensryche has. I'm not the guy that sang those songs. And the minute I know that, I uh, you I, understand. They, yeah, no, no, I, I get what you're saying. I got to also say, because Gus is from Greece, there is that other humility angle. Breaking out of Greece is, and making it into like the global sort of world is, is, is no small feat. I mean... There's just a handful. What Nana Muscari? That's it. Like who's really broken, like on a oh, global scale. On a global scale, but you have a, big bands like Rotting Christ. There's other big. Well, bands they're not. Greek, they're not the, the, not, the degree. Not the, they're they're not a the Queensrÿche. I mean, to the level that Gus did, 
I mean, look. I know what even, you mean. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's like a world, a different world recognition. You know, a different status. You know, like and 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 that, you know, that spotlight is in in heavy metal. You know, we're playing with one of the originators of the music that we are. We exactly. Love exactly. That is a special, exactly. and, and I and I realize that. And of course, you know, coming from Greece is even more special because that's I mean, right. Come on. Greece That's is not right. the, it's not exactly the Mecca of I, I, metal. You know, you know, Gus, I remember when you were hired, like, I mean, you know, just from the, the press releases and all that stuff. Yeah. I was like, what? I was like, kind of like taken back in a sense. What? He picked a Greek guitarist, what, from the U.S.? At first, I didn't get it. Yeah. And oh, he's from Greece. I'm like, what? It's like, I, it's, it, it just, you know what I mean? It just didn't click. It was such a special moment, probably for Greece, right? That yeah. somebody's actually you know working like with a, Ozzy, you know? the, the originator of heavy metal, right? Yeah. You know, when it's like, oh, local, you know, uh, uh, local town boy makes good, right? That's right. And he's he's the guy for, for the country. Think about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and uh, <laughs> I think we're completely getting off track here. But okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, Gus, if you have to go. Tell me, tell, hey, tell me, tell me if look you have to go. Tell me if you have to go at any time. I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little hungry, look. but I'm good. Oh, look at him. He's just eating. Olives? Yes. He's through lunch. Oh, my God. Dude, You're crazy. look how big these things are. Yeah, yeah, big all this, man. They're massive. <laughs> and hold on, genetically Jimmy. enhanced. Jimmy, hold on. Like yes. every Greek, I bet you got Gus might even not. I don't know if Gus has this. Check this out. What do you have there? What's he to get? He's gonna bring out a big souvlaki stick, right? Or now. like a bucket of feta or something. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's what he's. This is there. how we get our olive oil. You gotta get some goats there and create your own. Yep. Breed your own feta. Oh, look at that! Oh, and tin. Dude, hold on. I have tin. this whole thing with a. Is that olive oil? No, yeah, it's from it's from our family. We with a pump. I don't even know how big this thing is. It's written in Greek, but this thing's massive, and we just keep filling the bottle when it gets empty. Dude, you should start a distribution business in the states. So you're gonna make a lot of money. My, my, my mother, my I mother. My mother, when she comes back from Greece, you know, she brings like fruit and stuff in the luggage. I go, mom, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. Then be razi, then be razi. Hola. Look at that. You're crazy, crazy Todd, man. You're she crazy bring figs things. And, and pears. And I go, you're not supposed to do that. Three of these things full of feta. Homemade, homemade from her family. Homemade feta. Why don't you start a distribution business? I know, call I gotta it, tell her. Call about it the it. real deal. No, they're called Queen's Rights <laughs> Feta. <laughs> or maybe Todd Latori. So okay. hold on, Gus, in what did we what did we not cover on the I record that, that you want everybody that you want people to know? I think we pretty much covered everything. We covered it all. Right? Think, we didn't uh, we didn't get the last two albums wait a second hold on hold on we're not finished here oh the last oh, two Aussie God. albums we're still uh, doing that Todd, Todd Todd's like because you guys screwed up on the ultimate sin that's why he's like I don't want to talk about it count me out <laughs> all right L uh, let, let me finish two up. more two Four more albums two more two more you know which one you know which one okay we did bark be. we did ultimate sin we did uh, no rest for the wicked no no and no, there's no, like, no no bark at the moon no more tears uh ultimate sin and um Look, yeah. two and one are going to be the two Randy Rhodes albums, and I cannot really pick which order because I, uh, yeah, if I if I'm going to be, I mean the the biggest hit is on the first album, right? Mm -hmm. Crazy Train. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the second album is the one that I was exposed to first, of like from a from an emotional side. That was the mm -hmm. album that I first heard yep. of Ozzy, you know. So. But, you know, there's crazy trainings on the first album, <laughs> on the debut, and I don't know. And yeah, I mean, they're, it's really hard to, to choose. So yeah, they, they both have my top spot. So one was it the neo neoclassical aspect of Randy Rhodes that made him so special? I think it was a combination of things. It was ju not just the neoclassical. I think it was, the, the, the in my opinion, the, the way he blended um, the European he had this European flavor in his playing, but he still had this American, you know, he was American. So he, he had that classic rock thing. Uh, you know, he was also into seventies glam rock and things like the, this, you know, and, and he kind of made heavy metal. He, he, he was able to, to play this metal riffs and, and themes and leads and, and put them in like in a, in a, almost like a, 
pop song format. You know, you know what I mean? Like it. Yeah, no, it's a great, great explanation. I like that. Yeah. So it's like it, it was. I don't know how to. Yeah, how to. to he to he he mixed neoclassical European flavor with American flavor, and he sort of. He, and it and it, and it all trans translated, and he could put it into a three minute song. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and and have it on the radio. And and he was he was like the, the like Zach Wilde has said, he was like the prototype for the modern metal guitar player. And I really agree with what Zach has said. And that's like an old statement that he said. I think it probably sticks by today. And I, I agree with that. He's like the prototype, you know, the way he looked, you know, the how innovative he was as a guitar player and the shapes, you know, he designed, um, you know, the Concord V and all that. So like there's just so many things about what made Randy special, you know. And, and he didn't like Black Sabbath, by the way. He, he and didn't he didn't like, like Black, Black Sabbath, Sabbath you know, I, I, which was even weirder. Yeah. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, I remember Ozzy telling me that. I'm like, what, really? Yeah. Did you ever hear the story about Randy Rhodes when he almost got shot? <clears throat> no. What, mm. what? What's that? Well, it's, you guys never heard of Randy Rose, never like uh, Kelly. Well, it's, it's you know it's a very very long story, and I try to summarize this as quickly as possible. I never heard this. His uh, and I've interviewed all these people, so I mean Kelly Kelly Garney, his original bass player in Quiet Riot, you know, uh, was drunk one night, and I'm just paraphrasing here, and I guess he just fired some shots in the air because they were having an argument. He didn't fire it at him; he just fired shots, and there was this big fight afterwards, and. That's what I'm all going to say. That's all I'm going to say. But wow. there was a night when Randy Rhodes sort of people, a lot of people were claiming, you know, that there was guns involved. And But it's still so sad that, you know, the, the guy was just not not meant to stay with us for a long time. And, and yeah, it's very, like very tragic, it's very tragic. Like it's, there's certain people that I'd look at them as like uh, comets, you know, they just pass by really quickly and they they share Make a profound their profound statement in a profound. short time yeah, yeah. like, like even Jimi Jimi hendrix, hendrix you know yeah yeah, yeah yeah like i think of people like hendrix like like uh like morrison you know like uh like uh randy rhodes later on so they they you know the they're just not meant to somehow i don't know why but but they they they, they give so much like in in a short period of time that lasts like forever amazing and, and influence it's it's crazy right and influences generations and generations of people i mean look at the beatles they weren't yeah. around for that long and that's look right at 10 how, years huh yeah. yeah 10 years or whatever yeah, yeah. janice yeah. joplin yeah i mean there's just so many um again when you have to go guys just tell us i'm trying to think if there's anything i like hanging audio. out with you guys it's it's like a, a nice reunion so i don't <laughs> it's saturday night i'm not going anywhere so you know also i gotta say on the cd there's a live version. There, there's a live CD, like the oh, bonus, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We did, and actually, uh, I really dig them. There's a lot from your Fearless, and there's Money for Nothing. There's a Thin it, Lizzy cover, Cold Sweat, which is great. You guys do a great job. I mean, for those people who just you. don't want only the instrumental portion, but they get this yeah. these live so performances. I, can, uh, I don't know if you heard them, Todd. Did I, I send them to you, I believe, right? Did you hear the live versions or anything? Did you get a chance? I haven't, no? I haven't heard any live versions. No, if I can tell you the story real quickly about how yeah, that came about. Yeah. I like three years ago we did a tour for my previous album solo album and uh, and uh we recorded a bunch of shows in europe and uh we recorded a show in budapest so we go home and uh dennis who plays bass sings and you know uh he's like dude let's mix this so we mix the whole show master it and send it to the label and i was like i approached him about doing a live album but you know live albums are not like a big thing anymore it's not that, right. that important. You're probably not going to sell many records of that. Mm -hmm. So we like, okay, let's put it out as an EP, like a digital EP. And we call it Live in Budapest Part One. So that came out. But then we kind of forgot about it. There was never a part two. <laughs> so it was just a part one. <laughs> so, so, so we were like asking, when is part two coming? I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, did, we forgot oh, about it. <laughs> we forgot about it. Like we still have a full show mixed master, you know, the label paid for it. And it's just sitting there. Wow. Wow. And um, so I thought, I said, look, we're putting this new record out. Why not do like a value for money kind of thing and put it together, package it as a double CD and use some of those live tracks. That's cool. So that's the story. Then we have like seven live tracks from that show in Budapest. And a couple of them are, are um, covers, you know, like a Thin Lizzy cover. We used to play as sound checks, and eventually we added to the set list because it's cool. It's just a great song. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah, and you know, money for nothing, which I I did a version of that on my previous album. Then we, remember, we did that yeah, live. Yeah, so, yeah. 
so that's that's a you know in short that's the story of the live album all right i think we uh we got everything we got uh, are there, are there any questions for gus from people oh yeah you know forgot about that let's let's go to the, let's go to the phones let's go to the phones the phones look at the phones here yeah put the live album okay john put the live album out i will definitely buy it the live album is oh i'm not sure it's on this cd is it a bonus or does it actually it come with it it's a it, it's a bonus it's a second disc okay all right so there you go you get the live album with it it's amazing okay yeah. marcy Marcy, I'm, I'm home tonight, chilling, resting from a shoulder injury. Okay. I have been dealing with all summer in PT. They think I've dislocated my clavicle bone. Somebody said, Heal well. Somebody said they're friends with Alex Panagakis from Athens. Loved your new stuff. You're a hero for Greek rockers to go. Yeah, it's, I think so too. Hola, amigos. I probably, said, I probably said the name wrong, but I tried. It's good. Tino, hola amigos from Carascas, Venezuela. A, a rock monster. Gus is a very talented guitar player and taught a true brutal singer. And Max, always cool guy. Uh, back for the attack, my Dawkin favorite album anniversary. Okay. And then, okay, so can I say something? I see yeah, go ahead. Keep going. Ben, L ben Laird says here, any insights into the new Queensryche album? Todd. Oh, okay. So, Todd, oh. so, so, Gus, what's up with the new Queens right album? <laughs> no, but I was going to ask if maybe Todd can say hey, something. Todd, go know. ahead, Todd. Because I've I've seen oh. some posts that the guys have been working on some stuff. So, yeah, I exciting. mean, we have the, the interviewer has become the interviewee, or is it the other <laughs> yeah. way around? No, we're just friends. <laughs> interviewee has become the inter okay. Go ahead. Um, I mean, we have all the songs that we're going to be recording. We're going to press record the very beginning of January. Um and it's it doesn't sound like the verdict it does it's its okay. own new kind of thing cool. um really just kind of focused more on melodic hooks what i don't think we went in thinking like oh we need to be like sound old school or new or this we were just like and you know what we did on this record like every other time each guy would kind of submit their own song ideas and then yeah we would kind of work on that. But what we did on this record was um, other than Eddie, Eddie has a couple songs that are really cool that he wrote and then showed us kind of when they were pretty much done. And then Michael um, kind of wrote some interesting chords, still staying within the, the, um, the keys and everything. But uh, we all got in a room with our producer here and we literally started from scratch like michael what do you got you know come up with a riff and casey would sit on the drums or i would sit on the drum like we would all we would all just actually in a room and just tried it like the good old days like um, bands used to do albums back in the day right yeah, that's yeah, how we yeah. yeah it's how everybody did that's it great, so, man. so this record was was totally like that um and we like the whole thing pretty much minus one or two songs and even that changed a little bit but uh, yeah i mean i i just burned a cd of all the demos to play in my car when i'm out driving around yeah and uh it's cool i think people i hope people will like it and you, see, you seem excited about it that means it's uh you know your, your guys are happy yeah it, so. you know i just i think they're really good songs and i'm coming excited. out this next year right it should be for 2022 yeah the plan i love is, gus yeah. gus i love what you're doing here <laughs> He's really a uh, player. No, but you role. know what? He's but he's right. We you know we we haven't we haven't uh, caught up talked in a while. So yeah, so I I, I want to see yeah. what's what's going yeah. on. Yeah, these are things yeah. we would talk on the phone anyway about. Yeah, Andy Sneep should move out, and Gus G should join Judas Priest. I can say that. I'm allowed to say that. I'm allowed to say that. That's my opinion, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm now I, you don't have to state anything, but it's fine. Which other, which other band should I maybe try and join? join? Uh, Jimmy, yeah, tell me. Well, let's say somebody in Iron Maiden, let's say somebody in Iron Maiden is ill. Yeah. Right? I think you could join that band. Oh my God. The Scorpions, if they need a second guitarist, right? I love the Scorpions. It, right? You could jump in. Feel free. Is there any other band there, or Todd, th we or, could think or of? Or if they need a, a third guitarist, you know. Why or not? a third guitarist. <laughs> Megadeth. If, you know, they, they're going through guitarists, like, you know, who knows? I mean, my buddy Kiko instance. is in, uh, he's in Megadeth. He's, and he's, he does great there. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, maybe he wants to, uh, you know, not retire and, you know, there's a slot open. You could join. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, those Just are bands that I, I love. Putting it I, out there. Yeah, I know. What Again, you mean, this so. is where, look, this is where it comes down to. Gus is qualified to play in any of those bands. Absolutely. By far. But it, this is where it comes down to, again, business. You know, what? What? It, what is it going to cost me to walk away from my home life my, yeah, and, and and now you're you're under somebody's thumb. Yeah, they better come with some serious fucking bread because he's already done all that. He's already played with Ozzy. Like everything else yeah. is just like, if he would want to, and maybe you know, I don't know. There's something to be said for having the freedom that he has right now. That's true. And That's true. It, it's not going to gain him any more notoriety than what he already has achieved. You know. Show me the euro. Show me the euro. The drachmas. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 I have drachmas with holes in them oh old really? school with holes yeah yeah with holes those back are in the those day. are worth quite a bit right now actually yeah 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 i do i have like back oh. my grandfather gave me like with little holes that's what they had money with holes only greeks would come out with donut money like yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right some last questions here hold on let me just take a look here I'm seriously fucking concerned now about this little you are? topic. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be. No. You know what? It's okay. It's all right. It's I mean, all I didn't public say anything. knowledge. You didn't no, just I said it. I said it. I said everything. It was my... I just asked the question, and it's public knowledge, and it's all over the internet. It's on Blabbermouth, by the way. It's already on Blabbermouth. So. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hey. public. It, it's, on, it's on Ticketmaster's site, for God's sakes. It's, it's all what are you going to do, Todd? Bada boom, bada bing. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm looking for questions here, so I'm looking for interesting questions. Uh, oh, modern day Gus, modern day guitarist. Who do you like as... A modern day guitarist, you know, not somebody in the past, a Hendrix or a Rhodes, but somebody today. Who do you find yeah. that's very? Yeah, good? there's a lot of great, a lot of great dudes out there, man, that are amazing, amazing. Like, you know, you were just mentioning Judas Priest, um, uh, Richie, Richie Faulkner. He's great. He's great. Think, yeah, he is. You know, like a modern day but old school kind of guy. You know, so what impress? What impress? I'm very hard to impress. Like I, I, I feel like we've all just been so inundated with so much music, and 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 I yeah. used to get that joy of going to the music store. It's like, yes, I can't wait. I'm gonna get the new Loudness record or the new mm. whatever, whatever it was. It was like, oh, I'm so excited. Everything is so. Oh, like everybody can hear the your anybody's record on for free on YouTube, and it takes that. There's that mystique. There's every everybody's so accessible. Oh yeah, that's gone. Everything. That's gone. So so well, let me ask you. What is it that and it might be a hard question to answer. What is something that um, impresses you as a guitar player when you hear other bands? Uh, is it do you go right for the guitar? Do you go right for the to the songwriting like? If you hear a guitar player, they're like, man, you got to check this band I th out. I Gus, think it would be guy, who. This guy who fucking is the question? Who? Yeah, yeah, who? No, 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 well, not who, not who. Why not? Because I don't care who it is. I'm asking him, I'm asking him what, what is it that may, will make his ear go, ah, it could be space. It could be reservation yeah. in playing. I don't know. I'm asking. Are you talking about like a uh, guitar playing specifically? Guitar, like yeah, a guitar. Yeah. Hey, Gus. This guy fucking rips because everybody thinks you're gonna like care about some shredder and you probably yeah. don't. Uh, you gotta check him out. What is mm -hmm. something that would spark in your mind and go, hmm, I like that? Like, what would be a characteristic or something that might uh, impress you of a guitar player, a, a newer guy that's fresh? I think on the it? I think the note choice, the way they, you know, the note choice, how they choose notes, phrasing. I, I look at things like that, you know, vibrato. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's like a lot of guitar players nowadays that are doing different things in the prog world that they don't even bend strings or do vibrato. And they're still very impressive and they play different types of chords and different use different techniques. You know, look at, you know, the guys at uh, Animals as Leaders and that kind of world, you know. Right. Uh, uh, that, that, I mean, that is impressive, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's not like necessarily my cup of tea. I'm not going to go crazy right. over that and be like, sit down and practice all those things, but right. it is impressive as it's, it's something as indifferent, you know, really different and pushing the, the, the pushing forward the guitar, you know, is there um, anybody that you're listening to now 
who 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 would you listen to now that would make people go wow he listens to that what would name a, an artist or a band that that you would listen to within the last six months that would surprise people oh i don't really listen to a lo- whole lot of new stuff you know I when, I, when i put on spotify i go back to my old favorite things all right let me, let me throw out some right. names and you give a quick little as a guitarist yeah, what maybe, you think maybe yeah, yeah yeah alex right. lifeson rush me i i'm i was never a big fan of Alex, I'm not a big fan of Rush. Uh, I know it's an unpopular opinion. I know Canadians will hate me for <laughs> saying this, but you know, I, I just never got into it. Sorry. That's all right. All right. All right. Okay. David Gilmore, Pink Floyd. And I'm looking I at the comments it. that people are asking. So yeah. everybody out there, David Gilmore for Metal Mike saying, what do you think of David Gilmore, Pink Floyd? I love, I love David Gilmore. I mean, it was one of the first, my, one of my first things, exposure in rock was when my dad played me Pink Floyd, uh, Shine on Your Crazy Diamond, and that's like, I mean, that thing had a impact on me. So uh, I, I love Dave Gilmore style. I love his tone. So yeah, I love everything Dave Gilmore. Yeah. When I was younger, I, I could not stand Pink Floyd. I was always, everybody that I knew listened to Pink Floyd, they were all a bunch of burnouts and they were getting high and or they were on acid or we used to have this laser light show and you could go yeah. to this thing and it would be this laser light show and everyone's like, uh, you know, and they're, they're hot. And I was like, fuck this. And I was listening to, you know, Racer X and Paul Gilbert and Yngwie. And, and here I'm yeah. going, this is boring. I hadn't matured enough to understand. And then now I'll go back and I'll be like, I want to learn another brick in the wall solo. Yeah, man. And you realize there's vibrato in every note. Even when he goes, Nobody was doing that. No, that, that, that that's like his signature bend, you know, like yeah. you've you been like but, but whole step and then whole and a half. Yeah. The beauty of David Gilmore space. is the melody. I love David Gilmore now. It's the melody, right? It's the iconic solos. Think of Comfortably Numb. You oh, know, yeah. Everybody could sort of hum it in their head. All right. Akira Takasaki from uh, Loudness. Oh, he's killer. Oh, he's killer, he's yeah. Best. He's the best. He's fun. I like his... He's awesome, yeah. He rocks, and he's the first guy to play these weird chips that I'm playing. He's the guy that made him popular. Um, by the random, way, the da- David's saying I'm Canadian. I don't hate you for non-Rush fan. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, <laughs> when I was uh, in Greece back in 1980 something, I was just surprised. My cousins had all these Rush albums. I go, I'm in Greece, and they like Rush. It was bizarre. It was just very bizarre. Oh yeah, they love they love Rush everywhere, man. It's just not. It was just never my thing. You know? So that's all. All right, Eddie Van Halen. Do, uh, do you own a bazooki? I don't. It's hard and to play. I have a beautiful bazooki. And here's something. Uh, have I told you about that before? It's not like, a bazooka, a bazooki. I have a bazooka, not a bazooki. <laughs> <laughs> did you serve in the army, Gus? Gus, did you serve in the army? <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't go there. <laughs> yeah, that could that could you don't want it. that could be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's that. not. We're talk not going to go there. Right. Okay. What but are we talking bazooki, about? Bazooki, bazooki, bazooki. bazooki. I don't. Uh, I, you know, those guys that play so technically and it's amazing, but I just also never like, I never got into the sound of it. Like oh, when I, I heard that, that, and then when yeah. I heard, when I was a kid and I heard that, and because my dad was playing all those Greek records at home and when he played. That's probably why. That, but when he played, yeah, but maybe when he, but when he played rock records, he had a couple like distortion on guitar. That's what, you know, blew my mind. That was like, I'm like, this is the sound I like, not that. And because, uh, and because it's very, to my ears, it's very linear playing. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I've ever, because the one I have is four uh, pairs four of string. two. Okay. So they're pairs of two. There's three strings and four, four string blues. Mine has four with two okay. strings each, each pair. Um, I don't know that I've heard vibrato. No, they don't uh, do that. But on some of the, which bugs me because I love vibrato, but yeah. um, pitches love vibrato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But, uh, you know, the Saz instrument family is, is uh, I always like, uh, and you hear it in Turkish, you know, you hear it in a lot of the regions there, but um, the frets are like a wire that'll wrap around the neck. It's not like a, an, an, uh, a slot with a, with a yeah. thread on some of the other ones and they'll go they'll vibrato like george lynch does right yeah the, yeah yeah but gus have, can you and, and, gus can you dance greek very well that's like my traditional... that, that's my forte dancing greek music yes you should see me up on the tables no i can't 
<laughs> no. All right. Um, who, who, wait, there was another one there. What kind uh, of question is Wolf that? Wolf Hoffman. Wolf Hoffman. That's a good question. It's a legit question. People want to get to know the real Gus G. Um, Wolf Hoffman, accept as a guitarist. Legends. I love him. Legend. Yeah, yeah. He's another yeah. neoclassical. He's got. A, he's always playing around with the stuff. riffs. You know, so iconic and so influential. Like the riffs. You know, just ah, I love accept riffs, man. Chicken or pork souvlaki? Chicken. Okay. All right. How about you, Todd? I, st- I stopped eating pork. Okay. All right. I'm not going so, vegan yet, but I'll start eating pork. So yeah. let, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding. <laughs> in, uh, well, actually, gyro right? Mm -hmm. Like gyro, gyroscope, round. I think that comes from the cylindrical thing where they shave the meat. It goes Mm -hmm. goes round, round, goes around. around. Okay. That's where that word comes from. Never ends. It just keeps going round and round. Right. But in, in the U S everybody goes, Oh, uh, uh, a a gyro with lamb or a souvlaki with lamb. And from what I understand, lamb is not Okay, guys, 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 I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to expose, I'm going to expose the Greek community right now. I don't think it's, it's lamb at all. I'm going to expose, lamb is three times the price of any other animal that we eat. So a lot of times they kind of sort of elude that it's lamb, but it's not really lamb. It's really, but I don't even think that's a, I don't, yeah, no, they have lamb civilaki, but a lot of times, but that's not the normal thing with lamb, right? They have lamb souvlaki, yeah. But no, no, they're not going to put in a euro. It's too expensive. Hold on. There's also a difference what you're calling souvlaki. Souvlaki in Thessaloniki and souvlaki in Athens are two different things. Let let you know. Gus answer this 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 question. Thank you. He ahead, knows I'm Gus. right, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of strange to have this conversation with Why? You. <laughs> Why? With this, we want to get to know the real Gus G. No, no like... Todd Costa is knows. his real name. Costa Hold on. Let him say it. Like, it. Todd is talking about differences between... Athens and Thessaloniki because they, there are some things that we say differently and um, yeah but <laughs> it's kind of a, like an ongoing joke so like it's different in Athens and Thessaloniki it is well, burgers are different what? in different parts of the U.S. No, yeah. when you say souvlaki in Athens, it means like um, they're all souvlaki, like even the the, the gyros sandwich. Mm. They also call it souvlaki. It's like a general meaning in, in Thessaloniki, where I'm from. When you say souvlaki, you mean the actual souvlaki, the, the skewer, you know, but so uh, yeah, yeah, the skewer with the chunks of meat. Yes, that's what we mean. Yeah, you, you know, we call it here in Quebec. No, in Quebec, they call it brochette. Oh. It's a brochette. So it's a brochette. That's what they call brochette. it. Because they have to find this sort of French translation here. So right, oh. right. brochette de poulet. That'd be a, a chicken, chicken y- a souvlaki. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got a lot of Greek restaurants here. It but go ahead. Like, so so you're saying there's different icon. meanings of what a souvlaki plate is. So where my parents are from, souvlaki is just souvlaki with the skewer and that's that. Yeah. But I mean, that's I've been to means. Athens. I mean, it's pretty, you know, when you go to, you know, the, if the you center go to Athens, Athens and you say, if you go to Athens and you say, give me a souvlaki, they will be like, okay, with a uh, gyros or what? So that, so you have to specify what it is. And when you, and if you want the actual souvlaki, you will have to say kalamaki. And kalamaki oh, yeah, means, yeah. and kalamaki is straw. Yeah. So there's always this kind and of- And you, know you know what they have in Greece? Greece restaurants, they, they put the French fries in the gyro. That's every, yeah, that's, that's not here though. They don't do that here. They do that here. Yeah. They don't do that here. I took one time we went to Subway. No, they don't. Subway. (laughs) Subway. Yeah. One time we went to Subway and my wife goes, uh, do they have French fries? I go, they don't have French fries at Subway. She's like, what do you mean? I said, they don't have it. They don't put, she goes, you can't put fries they don't even have fries to put in the sandwich i said no that's the, that's a greek thing they don't do that here and she was flat even at the greek restaurants here if you get a gyro um they don't have they don't, have fries they don't there. put fries just in. a salad right yeah yeah i mean you'll have the tzatziki the meat onion tomato but and you're not going to get french fries you're not going to get fries in the in the pita or anything like that and so yeah people are they don't know that and when when they realize they put french fries in all their sandwiches you know well no they good. don't do it here they don't do it here they they do it in greece but they don't do it here and i guess it's catching on because it's becoming popular there or it is popular there right john saying i've got you stole for this interview sagapao costa ketod that's what john 
is saying. Love you back, dude. Thanks, John. And uh, let's see. Uh, Lamb of God is an American band. So I guess we're talking about lamb. We're talking about <laughs> Souvlaki and lamb. So <laughs> there's a lot of lamb going on. Plus, they're saying, John's saying the best Souvlaki and Euro are in Greece. I would agree with that. Yes. We have. Uh, do you have souvlaki bar there in Greece? It's it's like a it's like a franchise called souvlaki bar. Where no? here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. They have vromik, 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 vromik. Get the dirty. <laughs> Aplitos. That's what my mother used to call me. Aplitos, uh, because I had long that, hair. That's, what what? That's a different thing, Jimmy. What, what Todd says it's a slang. Yeah, it's for, dirty. Um, it's dirty. No, a it's a chain. That's a fat. That's a chain. Like goodies. oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, do they say this when I like back in my day when I was young? I had long hair. Now, of course not, but they, you know, they used to call you aplitos, which means like aplitos is like unwashed. Unwashed. So if you had long hair back in the day, Todd, you'd be aplitos. You'd be like now. I don't know in Greece, Greece, if it's there or something. It moved to North America. You know, I don't know. That's probably they used to say that long time ago. They don't. Long time ago. Long. Because when that was a new thing, it was like unheard of having long hair. That's That's right. That's nice. right. So it was like bum, like they call you a bum. Yeah, you like a hair. like a yeah, like a homeless bum or whatever. But you know, so now I was like a bum. They they still look at you weird if you have long hair. It's not very, but you know, but it's like it's more no, normal. Not, not but today. but still, but it's still weird. All right. Anybody else want to know about Greece? We got uh, we got uh, the tour, the tourist Gus G, the tourist guru right here. Anything about Greece? The metalheads in Greece. Tell me what the metalheads. I mean, they're. They're, they're like hardcore metalheads. I like, want to hear what Todd thinks of metalheads here in Greece. I, I I have my opinion, of course. I can tell you about it. And I, I'm going to tell uh, you they're okay. amazing, but I want to hear what Todd thinks. As an outsider? Yeah. Uh, Xenos. Xenos. They are... I mean, I haven't toured South America, so Gus would know where they do... They do mm-hmm. all the singing, the chanting they are they will sing every guitar line louder than the band they're extremely passionate and they're very animated so people always think like oh germany you know i'm not the germans are great but as far as being the most like if you go hey hey one time the whole place will do that. It, like if you if you play Gus plays a song with his uh, melody, they will oh they'll yeah. sing all the melodies, yeah. and they're they're very uh, they participate in the whole yeah. thing, and they make you feel like you're all one big family. You know you don't you don't get uh, you know you don't. I mean there might be some guy some malaka in the back there, <laughs> but otherwise. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, they enjoy the show, man. They live that. They live it. And, <laughs> and it, There's always that guy, isn't there? There's always that guy. Yeah, the one, the failed musician who never fucking made it. Oh know? God, that's funny. You know, the angry guy. But but I'm, I'm, wait a second. Are you saying the South American audiences are similar to the Greek audience? Is that what they're you're saying? Are you just yeah. trying to compare? They are. I mean, they from are. what I've seen and heard, they they sing all the parts. Like the Greeks will sing all the melodies, even you know. I would compare. I would kind of like, not compare, but I would put them like in a similar category of, like Todd says, they're very um, animated. They are. They they love to sing. They love to participate. Like they're very expressive. Yeah. So passionate too. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, in South America, yeah, it's like that, and I think in some Mediterranean countries like yeah Greece or Spain you'll you'll get that kind of vibe and um I, I when I spend my summers in Greece with my family right <clears throat> um I used to walk into record stores back in the early early 80s yeah and I go wow there's metal everywhere I go oh my god I'm, I'm in a town of 20,000 people and there's like metal everywhere I go how is this possible this is before internet here we're talking about like 19 early 1982 83 Mm. and the lady comes up to me she goes what are you looking for i go oh this this and that she goes and she brought me to this back room and they have all these tapes these these bootleg tapes like in other words they would record the albums on tapes and you'd buy it for half the price yeah so because because not everybody had money to buy records so back then you could go to a record shop and you you could tell them hey make me a, a 
A mixtape, like, yeah. A mixtape, yeah. So you would uh, give them like, I don't know, just a few drachmas and they would make you a mixtape what they liked or, you know, copy me that album and you would still pay for it, but like a one fifth of the price or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, I got to listen to a lot of uh, records like that because I, I, yeah. I couldn't afford to buy records every week or anything, you know, so I would get them from friends and we would uh, trade and stuff like that. Yeah. Like back, yeah, but- like here in the 80s and 90s, you would have some places, some clubs that were like, like we had a place called the Rocket Club, and that was like a really cool, you know, place where you would hear that kind of music. And then uh, there was another place in Tampa where maybe you might hear more death, but it was it was more um, like a venue that had a bar versus in Greece, there are just tons of bars and cafes that just play that music over the stereo system in the in the place and maybe they don't you know some of these places are little tiny places there's no it's not a live venue no. uh and it's just so a you, bar. Have, you can go have it's, a, it's a just drink. a bar yeah it's a bar like uh what is the place there uh eight ball uh eight ball is a venue though it's a that's bar a venue that that's a venue. a venue okay revenge okay revenge that's in athens revenge of rock yeah that's a that's a bar that's, that's, that's like I'm a not- bar I'm not sure if they had they had any shows ever there. But I don't think not, so. But no. but they have like tons of different. If you listen to like gothic stuff, you can go to a club that's just yeah, yeah, that yeah. stuff. If you listen to so when you talk about Greece with the heavy metal thing, I mean I know um, you know Crimson Glory was highly revered in Greece. Uh, yeah. Sabotage, you yeah. know uh, probably Iced Earth. I mean, Power yeah. metal was ve- is embraced in Greece. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, big, big time. time, big big, big time. time, big time. Like U.S. power metal bands, they they love here. Yeah. Um, do they still do rock wave? Is that still a thing? Um, I don't know. Yeah, if they, that's still still... Yeah, yeah, they still do it. Yeah, yeah, they still do that. Yeah. 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 So that was my experience, and um, probably because my wife's Greek, and like I have some friends there. Of, of all of the places in the U.S. that I've ever played, no place ever made me feel more like I was at home than mm. my hometown show or in Greece. And that's, that's true. Yeah. I feel like I'm part of, even though I'm I'm not a Greek, I feel like I kind of belong. I don't know why. I don't know why. The first time I ever went there before well, I ever- It's because you love those olives so much. You eat them for <laughs> breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I just I don't know. You know what it is, Todd. I've Todd, they they, they look at, at you know, like you get a small country like Greece and like many other countries that are they look at American or North America as wow, this is like you know, it's like this other world in a sense. And when they come to their countries, it's bigger than it really is in their minds, right? And they embrace it so much more and love it so much more. It's like a, yeah. It's like you're honoring them by coming to their country, right? You know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I think that's what it is. And because you know, in the '90s, there were not there was not many metal shows here, so every time somebody came through town, if like, right, country, it was a big deal. It was a big deal, man. Like it doesn't matter if you if you are the, the most hardcore fan of such and such band that roll through town you were gonna go to that show no matter what because you never know when the next show is gonna be so um yeah yeah so it it was that kind of thing and um i think that's maybe that's why there's certain love for specific bands that kind of maybe opened the doors and came out here first or one of the first bands or or Mm -hmm. in more difficult times when you know because greece geographically it's not so easy to go with come over with with a tour bus like it right. takes, like if you're in Central Europe, it takes two days to drive down here to do a couple of shows and then two days to go. So it's logistics as well. So not all bands can do that. Yeah, it's good if you can start a tour there and work north and, you know, but yes. if you have Greece in, in the middle of a tour, it can be, it could, just the pure logistics alone could just make Greece not happen. Mm-hmm. Um, like Ozzy, if you went to Greece, he's going to play two cities. There isn't like five, six, seven, eight shows, like, you know, like in a row, right? Ozzy doesn't play. count because he can just fly there and it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, yeah, but I'm didn't... just saying like a big name act is going to go to the two biggest cities and that's it from a The only one who has done that is Deep Purple and Scorpions. They have toured uh, in the, the smaller cities. Yeah. 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 They've yeah. done like five or six shows 
I mean, I, I, when I go out on tour in Greece, I can play like I've done a tour with 13 shows here. I've played in yeah, 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 yeah. small villages, you know, 400 people. And it was insane. And I've, you know, I don't care. I'll play in bars, you know, I'll set up on the floor and just, and yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. and it's just insane. These are like incredible shows, but you know, like a, a big production, you cannot fit that. You know, they're, exactly. they're, they're, they don't, they don't exactly. have venues like that in the rest of the cities. Not always. Sometimes they will have them and then they'll close down and then, but you can always count that you can go in the capital and, come here to Salonique as well right all right guys you know what I think we've been going on for about I don't know two hours now wow all right yeah sorry hey no, one no, last thing good. one last good. thing yes sir uh, uh, a guy says here John says we accept you Todd as a Greek there you go, there you go. <laughs> yeah there you go there you're a brother that's it that's it so you're part of the tribe now you are. please pick up your paperwork after the show he has eaten enough olives in his lifetime to qualify for Greek. <laughs> it's Carlos funny. Hey, real Spera. quick, real quick. Listen, yeah. When I when I go to this market, if my in laws don't send feta, I go, legally we go, we go we go to the <laughs> in a suitcase. Um, yeah, it's a suitcase. Um, you don't get it. My mother's like a whole luggage full of food. Like <laughs> we uh. We go to this place and it's called Pasadena Produce or whatever. And the guy, Spiros, he owns the place. But I always deal with this other guy who's from Bulgaria. His name's Phil. He's a super cool guy. In fact, he does string. He does a He worked with like Olivia Newton John doing orchestra and wow. like he works with Pro Tools and we talk about music. He's a really cool guy. Anyway, when I go in there, I just go he'll go one I go one and he'll get me one whole block it's about it's about two two and a half kilos like one big thing and so when I go around I hear other people like oh um yeah I'll try the French feta and I'm like there's no such thing as French feta you know and I say and I say to Phil I go Phil he's like yeah I go there's one feta not Bulgarian, Bulgarian from, feta. Bulgarian goes, feta. They don't argue goes, about oh, that. Bul he goes, you want to try the Bulgarian feta? I go, doesn't <laughs> exist. It's white it cheese. Exist, right? Stop yeah. calling it feta. There's one type of feta. It's from Greece. End of story. Done. I become a and it's, I and it's a, a Greek snob. and it's a Greek word. Word, you know, it's like feta means slice. So yeah, yeah. 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 Everything comes from Greece, <laughs> except for baklava. They're 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 just arguing about that all the time. Is it Lebanese? Is, is it Greek? No, no, it's not Greek. Baklava is not Greek. Oh, it's a Turkish okay. thing, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. No, it's not Turkish. It's, isn't it Lebanese? Oh, or maybe yeah. I don't know, but it's definitely not Greek. Who gives mm. a shit? It's not Greek. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's not Greek. It I don't care where it's. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, I think, uh, let's see. It was okay. really good to see you, my friend. You too, man. You too. I miss you. Yeah, All likewise. Right. I'll, I'll I'll be in touch with you soon. I promise. I'll call you. We'll we'll All we'll, right. we'll chat. Maybe we'll All do right, something. Brother. Maybe we'll do something on the side of we'll side yeah. Of, we should at one. some point. Yeah. All right. I, I see that. Latori Gus. Uh, Latori yeah. G. Latori G. Yeah, Latori G. That's what I would say. It, it, it would have to start with his name. Oh, G. Latore. We're not going to argue about those things. Well, I'm so trying to figure out the name here. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me on. When he told me, "Hey, do you want to get on?" I was like, "Maybe I'll just be in for like ten for minutes." For a few minutes. Out, but... For a yeah, few yeah. minutes. Sorry. Well, it doesn't go like that, man. And why should you be only for ten minutes? I'm glad that we, you know you were you were joined us tonight here, and uh, we had such a great time, and we yeah. caught up, and we and congratulations, so congratulations yeah. on the on the new album. Thank Everyone, you. go out and buy it. Don't listen go. to it on YouTube and stream it for free. Support right. exactly what he's doing and spend a little bit of money and buy it. Yeah. Thank you, man. Don't be a cheapskate so and buy the album. That's it. <laughs> for exactly. You guys are. For God's you guys rock. Sakes. Thanks so much. For All right, God's guys. Sakes. Gus, All I'll right. see you, buddy. Thanks, Have Jimmy. Have a good one there. Thank yeah, you, Jimmy. Bye, 